Hello and welcome to this FPL, my latest draft video with me, Holly Shand. There are big changes afoot, a lot of changes from my previous draft and I'm now feeling far more organised for game week one. Help me get this video to 500 likes and 20k subs for the start of the season. Well, let's get into it. Starting off between the sticks then and Pickford makes way for Flecken who's now my favourite 4.5 million goalkeeper. Obviously we need David Rea to depart Brentford which will make Flecken first choice but I was encouraged to see him start a pre-season friendly for the Bees and you know Brentford are a team more than capable of keeping 10 plus clean sheets a season. Hopefully Flecken can improve from where Rea left off with a high save percentage as well. Some really nice opening fixtures for Brentford definitely helps his appeal. I've currently got West Ham's Areola as my backup among the four million goalkeepers. He looks most likely to win the number one shirt right now. Obviously he was the key man for the Hammers in their quest for the Europa Conference League trophy. So hopefully that could pave the way for him taking that number one shirt. Into the defence then, and I'm retaining the 3-5-2 formation. Esther Pinion and Trent keep their spots. I think when we're looking at our defenders, we need to try and get those that offer plenty of attacking threat alongside clean sheets. So they are both in there. Stupin and one of the most attacking fullbacks in the game. Trent out of position as well. And I've added an extra name in here now. I've dropped Arsenal's Gabriel in favour of Man City's John Stones because I really want more than one City player to start the season. Stones is also playing out of position, a similar role to Trent at Manchester City. He's got that licence to get forward. He's already scored in pre-season. I think he's worth the extra 0.5 million over an Arsenal centre-back. And even though City did struggle at times with clean sheets last season, they've got a great opening run of fixtures and they do tend to start the season strongly defensively at the very least. I've tried to get as much of the funds into my starting 11 as possible, so that means it's two 4 million defenders on the bench. First off, Sheffield United's Baldock, who plays as a wing-back, slight rotation risk, but with injuries elsewhere, he looks set to start the season. He's probably going to be my first sub for each week. I've also got Bell at Luton, obviously blanks in game week two, but again, looks like a starter at 4 million and some promising early fixtures for Luton despite that blank hopefully can provide cover on my bench if I need it. I'm sticking with the five-man midfield and three men retain their spots Matoma, Fernandez and Odegaard. Now I am starting to get a bit nervous by going Odegaard over Saka. Ideally, I'd like both of them in my squad, but I haven't quite got the funds. I do still think that Odegaard will outscore Saka over the course of the season, but Saka's ownership is scary, which has got me thinking, if I'm going to do the double up at some point anyway, am I better off going with Saka from the off to protect myself from that ownership? That's something I'm looking at right now. However, I have dropped my double City midfield of Foden and Grealish. I saw Kevin De Bruyne on the bench in City's first pre-season game and that's absolutely put me off the minutes for both Foden and Grealish who could both share the spot on the left flank for City with Pep saying with Mares gone that he's also looking for a right winger to join the club in the transfer window. So I've decided to spend the funds elsewhere. Um, as I said before, I would love to get Saka in my side, but 0.5 million off at the moment means that the compromise is Martinelli. He was a player that wasn't in my initial thoughts for game week one because I wasn't sure he was going to be fit, but he has started games in pre-season. He's looking sharp as well. He comes in 0.5 million cheaper. Obviously, there's always that threat of rotation with Trossard, but I believe Trossard's got a little knock at the moment. Martinelli is always going to be the number one pick for Arsenal out of those two to start the games. And, and we know he can keep pace with Saka and Odegaard for his attacking output. I spent big in midfield. I've also chosen to double up on Manchester United's attack with Marcus Rashford. The thing for me is United's first two home games against Wolves and Nottingham Forest look absolutely perfect, particularly for Rashford, whose form at Old Trafford is absolutely sensational. United still out for a forward in a transfer window, but if that doesn't transpire, in those first few game weeks, we could see Rashford playing up front out of position as well, which could really suit him. So I think he's worth all of that budget. And if you're going for a midfielder at nine, obviously you've only got Salah and De Bruyne who are over that price. 
once those early fixtures are out of the way for United, if I'm not happy with that double up, I can basically move Rashford to any other midfielder, which sounds really attractive. Now, Rashford and Martinelli will probably be the make weights if I decided to adjust this draft in order to get Mo Salah in. But at the moment, I think I'm happy going with the 3-5-2 with a stacked midfield with just a one premium. Now, obviously, that premium is Erling Haaland, who's been in all my drafts and is going absolutely nowhere. Joining him, I have experimented with having Gabriel Jesus in here, but at the moment, it's Brentford's Vissa. I did have Mbomo in my midfield in a previous draft, but being able to save that two million from Jesus down to Vissa is really appealing because it's helped me to squeeze both Martinelli and Stones into this draft. I think Mbomo is the better pick because he's playing almost as advanced as Vissa. He's probably on penalties as well, but this is probably the compromise here, but it does allow me to take advantage of those early fixtures for Brentford. Now I'm still waiting for a 4.5 million striker for my bench to emerge. It's unlikely to happen unless Balogun gets a loan move to another Premier League side. So he's still in as a placeholder, but he's probably not going to make my game week one draft if he's still an Arsenal player because he'd take up a vital Arsenal slot. Now I've got my team rated by AI over on the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tour. If you want to check this out, the link is in the description. It's given me a 97% team rating and a 95% rating for game week one. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a vast improvement on my previous draft. Now the AI transfers are quite interesting here, suggesting a move from Stones to Akanji, but I think that Stones is probably gonna be nailed and could be in midfield, so I'm sticking with him. That would allow though, those moves that I mentioned before, which would be getting Jesus in for Vissa and getting Mbomo in for Martinelli in my midfield. And that's kind of where I'm at with this draft with considering these moves. Now, you can get the recommended AI transfers as a Fantasy Football Hub member. You can currently get 50% off and they're running this fantastic offer of win your league or your money back, which is simply amazing. So if you want your team rated by AI, click the link in the description to go to Fantasy Football Hub. And as part of their revamp, Ultra membership, you can now pay monthly and get one team review per month from an expert, including myself. You can put a request in for me on there. So if you do want to get your team rated by me, do check out those ultra memberships on the hub. Let me know what you think to this latest draft then by getting in the comments. What would you improve? What are you wondering about in your latest draft? Just hit 18.5k subscribers. Would love to get to 20k for the start of the season. So help me get to 500 likes on this video. All of your support is really appreciated. I'll be back very soon with another video. Thank you for watching.